I will say this. It is very fake to ask you to do your show. And then he posted your picture about yes. doing a show. So he promoted you. <laughs> it's fake. Hey, guys, originally I wasn't going to put this out, but yesterday Kim Congdon went crazy and turned into a total Karen by trying to get me and my friends canceled. He broke me. He broke me. So I figured I would share not only what the latest developments were, but also the text conversation that we had over Instagram DM. I really do think it needs to be called out because when she's calling people to tell them that they shouldn't have my friends on shows, what she needs to remember is everything she does is bigger than her. She is not the star of anything. When it comes to Kill Tony, Tony is the star of that. So if she decided not to do Kill Tony anymore, there would be no consequence to Tony. When it comes to Legion of Skanks, she could completely stop doing Legion of Skanks. It wouldn't change Legion of Skanks. Roast battle. Most roast battles happen without her. So it's not even like she's necessary to any of the people that she's trying to threaten when she tries to get me taken off shows. What did bother me though was she tried to get one of my friends who was actually very funny and doing her own thing taken off a show because she shared the video that I made for Instagram, which really doesn't make sense at all because you never know why someone's sharing something. Sometimes people agree with the sentiment and don't know the players involved. I personally know that does not know Kim Congdon and that was not meant to be a slight at Kim Congdon. She just agreed with what I was saying in the video about some of the dynamics and thought that was worth sharing. Because what you have to remember is there are a lot of people that are within the comedy industry and get tired of the same things I'm tired of when I'm talking in these videos. And Kim Congdon should be more concerned with the fact that she's not doing well at the mothership than she's concerned with the fact that I mentioned that she's not doing well at the mothership. And what Kim needs to remember above everything else is that no matter who you are, karma is a thing. So while you're out trying to get me canceled and whoever else you've decided to get canceled, remember that you have a show coming out. And there's a good chance that between now and when that show comes out, somebody's going to be going through all your stuff trying to see what they can get you canceled for. And when that happens, I don't want to hear you complaining about cancel culture because you are cancel culture. Now, check out the video. What's up everybody, Ty Rivera here, the absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. Before we go any further, I'm just gonna ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you wanna comment just to help me on the algorithm, but you don't know what to comment, just leave a knife because Kim Congdon and Sarah Weinshank are already coming for my neck. If you wanna know the real backstory on it, I harassed both of them into moving here because I thought that they could be an asset to the scene. And when I say an asset, to the scene. I don't mean what they actually ended up doing, which is just coming in and out of town every once in a while to use the Austin comedy scene and Mothership specifically as a piggy bank. That would be so gay of us. You do nobody any good when you're doing that. If you want to be part of the scene, make it out to some of the other spots. Mix and mingle. So anyway, both of them have hurt feelings. And again, I blame Adam Egot and even Tony Hinchcliffe a little bit because I really do feel that real friends friends tell you the truth and they both need to know that their performances at the comedy mothership have not been up to snuff and I'll tell you what they sent me exactly what they sent me because I do feel like it's important to be accurate in the way that I talk about things and the things that I say so we'll start with Sarah because that was pretty quick Sarah just sent hey kind of you're dragging me online when I've only ever been nice to you and went out of my way to do your show and always show you love. You've also come up to me and told me I've had good sets. I don't want to be on bad terms with you, but this seems really fake and unnecessary. So I responded with, not fake at all. You know you have work to do and if you don't, you're not being honest with yourself. I appreciate you doing the show and I told you that. I even had Hooch walk you back, but you don't do well at Mothership and that's a fact. Maybe record your audio from your your sets and be honest with yourself about how it's going. We're not on bad terms, but I'm 100% done pretending things are something other than what they are. Lastly, don't ever mention being nice to me like that's a favor. I'm nice to you as well, and I'm definitely not clamoring for you to be nice to me. And that's really the way I feel about it. I also think it's silly that she thinks that because I told the truth that I was dragging her. I'm not dragging her at all. And technically, I don't tell her she has good sets. What I usually 
say to her is I give her the big eyes, as big as my eyes will go, and I'll be like, fun set. When I say fun set like that to somebody, that's me being as nice as I can be and acknowledging the fact that you did have a set and it probably was fun for you. I'm not saying that it completely wasn't fun for the audience, but maybe I'm old school, but I just like to see people kill it in actual shows. So here's what happened with Kim Congdon, Miss I'm So Secure in Myself. She really did make a fool of herself tonight because I was just enjoying my evening. I stopped by the creek and I did the open mic I'm gonna be honest absolutely destroyed it anybody that was there tonight will tell you it's just the way it went down so Kim hit me up with a clown emoji on one of my stories which I also know for a fact because friends have told me that Kim and Sarah sent them text messages because some of them liked my reels that I put up and what these girls don't get is these people aren't even necessarily saying they agree with what I'm saying they're just comics. I put things in a funny way and the way I did the edits was also entertaining for some people So they were just liking it on that level They weren't necessarily saying they agree with me But these two try to turn it into that because they're trying to do this thing where they think they're gonna be able to get me Blackballed or blacklisted or whatever and it's like you're both trying to do your own version of cancel culture While pretending to be anti cancel culture so you guys can do that all you want to but I need to spend more time editing any Anyway, so I don't really care. The first thing that Kim did, which I'll tell you really quick, and I don't know why she thought this was a clown, but she sent me a super thanks on YouTube, which if you guys want to send me a super thanks, please do. I always appreciate the money, but she sent me a super thanks for $4.99. Okay, baller. And she included some text. I'll post it here. And I just felt like, what in the Section 8 is happening right now? Who's paying anywhere close? close to $4.99 for their rent. I don't even know why she thought that was clever. I would have chosen something that was really insulting, like maybe a penny. I don't know if that's an option or 99 cents. Or if you really want to be insulting, you send me your $100 or $200 and you just include the words, you need this more than I do, clearly. Sorry to have taken your spots. Something like that might have drove it home more. But when you're trying to be bitchy on a budget, it's just never going to work out. I mean, like, I'm sorry, Kim, but you're just not that girl. Apparently you don't have the means to be the type of bitch that you would actually like to be, and I get it. But what I told Kim was, since she had been so generous and sent me that money, I would do a full review of her comedy Just Short of a Special. The reason I call it Just Short of a Special is because it's 30 minutes. Who puts out a 30 minute comedy special? And she called it something like Childless Milf, I think is what it's called. And what she should have called it was Where's the Other Half? Because I don't really know why she thought a 30 minute special was something to put out, but okay, whatever. And then she also was proud of herself because she got 120,000 views in two weeks. Those are not good numbers. I've done commentary videos that have gotten higher views than that. If I went on Rogan and every other podcast like she did, because she did a podcast blitz, she went to every podcast she could possibly get on and promoted, 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 and then only gets 120,000 views and I kind of thought she was joking at one point where she was like a weekend and I think she had gotten like 60,000 views. Anyway, I'll post it right here because I really wasn't sure if she was joking, but she put like almost at a week and 65,000 views. Life rips. Also, life rips. Isn't that what Chris Pedophilia used to say all the time? But anyway, neither here nor there. And I was like 65,000 views in a week for a special? I would not be proud of those numbers at all. I would not even want to talk about that. I wouldn't even want to mention that I put out a special at that point. I'd be like, you guys, let's change the title of this and just make like it didn't happen. I might even consider taking it down. I mean, like a special? Not just a comedy video, but like a special. Okay, whatever. To each his own, to each her own. So this creep was going through my stories and then on one, she went ahead and put the clown emoji. And I'm like, why is this creep sending me a clown emoji right now? And I was at the 
the creek sitting with friends at the time. I'm talking with a group of friends, enjoying my life. It was a nice night tonight. But I did want to entertain this only for the screenshots. So I sent back, glad to know you're so easily shaken. And then I also sent a clown emoji because I don't care. I am a clown. You don't get a tattoo like this and then get offended by somebody calling you a clown. She put quaking. And then I sent, use this time to write jokes instead, which I really feel like she should do is just write some jokes. Stop with whatever you're doing right now and work on your actual set. My words really should have inspired you, but let's go on. So she put, you'll have plenty of time to do that because you won't be getting much stage time. LOL, LOL, LOL. Three LOLs. What are you going nuts right now? Or is that the ha 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 ha? Ha ha ha! Seems kind of unhinged. Whatever. The thing you have to know about me is I've already told people I'm quitting stand-up anyway. So anything you think you're going to take away from me doesn't matter. If you want to get on the phone with the people from Skankfest and tell them you don't want me there anymore, I don't care. Have at it. Flex your muscle, Kim Congdon. Also, the first step of blacklisting or blackballing somebody is gaslighting them into believing that they're not being blacklisted or blackballed. Plus, I've seen a lot of the menu date and the only blackballs you should be worried about are the ones that are usually hitting your chin. Good try though. So then I sent, how much of my stage time do you think was coming from Mothership? Because I am a true beast and will go to every mic I can possibly go to and then we'll get booked to do longer sets at other spots that aren't the Mothership. So I really am not worried about her taking my stage time like that. I don't even know why she thought this was a thing. And then that's when she responded with LOL, that's not what I meant. Have fun clown. All right, Kim, I get it. You're trying to threaten me. Little do you understand, while your friends may be humoring you in DMs, people are also laughing because I just clown you guys and that's what it is. And I didn't even mean to. I was just calling out the fact that you guys don't have good sets at Mothership. If Adam is having problems cutting fat on the show, I'll tell him where he can cut some fat. No pun intended, but you guys are fat that could be cut. And so I just sent back, unlike you, I don't only do one show. And then she sent thanks for your spots and then the kiss face emoji and then i put good luck selling more than 15 tickets of vulcan next time hopefully those numbers come up on your quote unquote special and that's just 100 percent true she sold 15 tickets at vulcan which vulcan holds over 300 there's an upstairs and downstairs she sold 15 tickets and then sarah's wine shank said hold my beer sold even less than that abysmal get a hold of yourselves can we stop acting like we're running the comedy world when we're only selling 15 tickets and then she sent, you're the only one worried. There's nothing you can say. So I sent back, I'm not the one hitting you up late on a Sunday night. So then she sent back, got me, Roast King. And I sent back, stay tuned for part two. And then she sent, can't wait, LOL. I'm telling you, this bitch is nuts. So then I sent back, also we'll be doing a full review of your special. And then she sent, I love watching people ruin their already non-existing careers. So then I sent back, is that why you put out a special? So anyway, she put, get more tattoos and keep being a spiteful little bitch. I'm sure it'll fix whatever's going on mentally, LOL. You only picked on a woman because anyone else would beat your puny little ass. Laughing emoji, pussy. I'm a gay man. Do you think I'm offended by the word pussy? Also, she's right. I did only mention her and Sarah Weinshank. They were the two that popped in my head. Jeffrey Burner is always eating hot shit at the mothership. And I love Jeffrey Burner. I'm very friendly with him. We often talk about working out and we've had some good chats but Jeffrey Burner could go too. maybe drop him down to one spot I'm not saying any of these people shouldn't get any of these spots but you have to remember there's 80 spots in a week Adam says that he's not able to book all of us and I'm not the only one that he would occasionally give weeks off because he didn't have any room for us but if you're giving Sarah Weinshank four spots and you're giving Kim Congdon four spots and then let's say you're giving Jeffrey Burner even two two spots. That's 10 spots right there. Drop them all down to one. Then you'll have seven spots left over and you can put up some of the other comics that actually deserve to be there and actually treat it like it's what it is, a paid show. And maybe we're not Adam's best friends. Maybe we don't party with Adam and Tony Hinchcliffe, but you'd have a much better show. And that's 
a fact. So when I respond to her on that, it was when she said, I'm sure it'll fix whatever's going on mentally, LOL. So I responded with, again, I'm not the one messaging late on a Sunday night. How am I the one that's mentally unbalanced or going through some sort of mental issue when you're the one that's hitting me up in DMs of all places? Because if this were happening on my actual thread of one of the videos that I had posted, I could understand because it might serve as promotion for her. And if she had her roast lined up, technically she could have just barraged me and possibly gained some new fans or made her fans hype to go watch her special and hopefully get those numbers up. You're not even thinking like somebody who has something to promote, Kim. You're literally acting like a psycho in my DMs right now, especially with all the LOLs and laughing emojis that just make you seem like a crazy person that really has no point. I don't even know what's happening. And then she sent, huh? You're literally too stupid to argue with, LOL. And I just sent back, you're bothered, Kim. And then she sent, bye, Ty. And the best part is she had just called me too stupid to argue with and then she spelled by B Y when she meant B Y E. And then immediately after she said bye, Ty, she sent, You're a moron. And then I put, and you're not good at bullying. She said, I don't need to bully you to feel good. Then why are you here? Because I put out some content where I mentioned you and Sarah Weinshank, but you definitely are trying to bully right now. Jeff, I've already been through this with her. She's not good enough to bully anybody at anything. I don't even know why Tony Hinchcliffe made her think that she was a better comic than she was. This really is what happens when you give these people false confidence is then they run in and they just get zinged because they're not ready. So I just sent back in response to her by tie BYE asterisk and then she sent those are your issues and I sent you don't even know how to spell and then she said listen to this sentence how come you never post with loved ones who loves you truly lol sad clown face who loves me the entire Austin scene I don't know if you know this Kim but a lot of people really do like me here I don't get it either to tell you the truth I'm not even pretending like I'm that likable of a guy I mean look at me you guys are watching this I'm kind of an asshole but people here like it I have a lot of friends you know I had to tell several people tonight not to sit with me and I wasn't even being bitchy it's just I wasn't in the mood to talk to and hang out with everybody I was hanging out with my friend Leonardo who just recently got banned from the mothership her story to tell though but it wasn't even like she did anything and then she sent me lonely sad boy and then she sent me a link to betterhelp.com which if she were smart it would have been something she's sponsored by just to send betterhelp.com I don't even know why she would send that again I think she thinks she's being clever right now, but do better, Kim. And then I just sent back, I'm with friends right now. I don't know what she was talking about. Lonely, sad, whatever. I was with friends, literally, at that moment. And then she put, sure, LOL. The people you met at an open mic this year don't count. I just said I was literally at the Creek open mic, but there were plenty of actual comics there. I think Kim doesn't really have an idea of what the Austin comedy scene is. So she says that like it's some sort of insult, but the Creek mic is actually great and she could use some time at a mic and then she wouldn't have to read off her phone when she's trying to do jokes at a professional show. That's what I would think. I would think her and Sarah Weinshake both need to be at open mics. And the fact that she thinks that mentioning that I might be at an open mic is an insult, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Because I'll work a joke out at three to five open mics and then I'll drop it in my act and then it looks like it's been in my act forever. Then it's just finding where I actually want to put it. So I'm not going to pretend like I'm at all ashamed to be at open mics. And I was like, you must be lonely to be messaging right now. You did Rogan and still got low numbers on your special. Not exactly loved yourself. And then she sent open micer. You didn't do Rogan and no one knows you. 125k in two weeks. Peace. And I sent I've gotten more views and this is where autocorrect started pissing me off. Then I've sent back I've gotten more views on a commentary than you've gotten on your special. Autocorrect change it to momentary which is very frustrating. And then she sent no one will remember you. Kim whether or not people remember me in a good way or a bad way I guarantee you people will definitely remember me especially in stand up if I end up dying being at the level that I'm at right now you know the way people love to remember the dead like they loved them like they should have when they were alive and I hate to break it to everybody I really am great at stand up it's just one of those things and I know it pisses some people off but it's just a matter of fact so I'm not worried about whether or not I'll be remembered 
I will definitely be remembered. I'm just hoping I hit it big before, but off commentary, I'm not worried about stand up anymore. Like, come on, get a life. And then I sent back, you think 125K is good? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Laughing emoji, laughing emoji, laughing emoji. And then again, autocorrect, fuck me. Cause I was saying in two weeks and then it said, I'm two weeks. And then I sent ha 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 ha. Cause I didn't notice that autocorrect had just fucked me. But the point still stands. 125K in two weeks is not great for a special. Look at possibly Sam Talent special or Shane Gillis special or Jordan Jensen has 425K on hers. So 125 in two weeks, Kim, that's not good. I don't know why you think that's a flex. And then she said, you understand that you are not a draw, which is why you aren't getting spots of the mothership. 15 tickets at the Vulcan, Kim. You're not a draw either. The mothership is the draw. You're Adam's friend. Don't get it twisted, Kim. You're really doing yourself a disservice right now. So I just sent back, you're not either. And she said, that's why when I come to town, you get less spots. I said, you sold 15 tickets at Vulcan. She said, it's the whole reason you're even mad at me in the first place. I took your shit and watch. I'll do it again. Kim, I'm really not mad. I just know for a fact that you don't do well at the mothership. And you know that. That's why nowhere in this do you say, I actually really do well at the mothership. You just haven't seen it. Or anything to that effect. You're the only one that thinks I don't do well at mothership. Something like that would make more sense. So I just sent back, you just don't do well at mother. And then she sent, and again, bye bye clown. Thanks for the review, exclamation point. And I've sent back, does this ever work? Because I don't know who would feel any kind of bullied by this. To me, it was just a ridiculous conversation from a girl that seems unhinged. And then I sent, you're not successful enough to be a good bully. Better luck in the future. And then she sent me and she deleted it, but she had sent me, you're a botched clown is what she sent me, which I've been very open about the fact that at a point I got injected with silicone and I had to have my whole face opened up and and then take the silicone out because the circulation wasn't going to the surface of my skin. So I started to get a brown spot here. There's still a little bit of, and then while they were at it, they figured that they should try to take the rest out as best as they can. And so for me, calling me a botched clown, I've already told you guys how I feel about being called a clown. Plus we're comedians, we're all clowns. And putting botched in front doesn't particularly bother me either. It is what it is. I'm a natural beauty, just like you're a draw, Kim. So that's what happened between me and Kim Congdon. Mm -hmm.